its final combustion form, Porsche's Macan continues to be an SUV with the soul and the engineering of a sports car. You might expect it to be fast and family friendly. More of a surprise is that it's rewarding and, with the right spec, very nearly race ready in its responses. Yet it'll comfortably take you off-road, deal with the school run and cruise down to Chamonix. It's very special, especially in this improved form. Let's give you the driver-orientated headlines first with this final combustion McCann update. These don't take long to cover across the all-petrol-powered range. There's a small power increase for the four-cylinder, two-litre base model, now offering 265 PS and also now available in more focused McCann T form. If you'd prefer a bigger capacity engine, the mid-range Macan S ditches its previous 3.0-litre V6 for the old turbo model's 2.9-litre V6 unit, which has boosted power to 380 PS. And that old turbo variant gets rebadged as the Macan GTS, the car we're trying here, which matches the old turbo model's 440 PS output, but adds in standard lowered sports air suspension. The Macan was already a handling leader in its class, but Porsche says that the chassis has been further optimised for this updated model, something you feel in the way that this car now responds a little more directly and with greater sensitivity. As before, four-wheel drive is of course standard on all variants, although in normal road conditions 100% of torque is directed to the rear axle. Should momentary slip be detected, a clutch pack locks, which can then send up to 100% of torque to the front axle. There's also a torque vectoring system, while a torque vectoring rear differential is an option. Unless you go for this top GTS variant, your Macan will come with steel springs and passive dampers, but an improved PASM adaptive system is optional, as is air suspension. These two elements combined with the PASM option on a Macan S. Across the range, for more challenging surfaces, there's a dedicated off-road mode, which optimizes the torque split and gearbox shift points to better optimize grip and torque when it gets really slippery. As for running cost efficiency, well, even this top GTS model doesn't do too badly. Recording WLTP best readings of 255 grams per kilometer and 25 mpg on the combined cycle. You'd really need to see old and new Macan models together to appreciate the changes made to this updated model year 2022 version. But actually there are plenty, perhaps the most significant one being the adoption of this redesigned nose section, which adds a lot more black plastic, wrapping itself from the corners to frame the lower section of a grille that now has an even more prominent central assist camera. We're not at all sure that this is an improvement, especially on this top GTS model, which does without the body-coloured front-end inserts that break up this mustachioed visage further down the range. On all variants, the situation isn't helped by the fact that one of the veins has been removed from each of the corner outlets, the intakes now revealing radiators that would probably be better unseen. Still, the full LED headlights still look smart with their four LED ice cube style design motif and they now gain, as standard, the brand's Porsche dynamic light system. Not much has changed in profile apart from the adoption of these sleeker sport design exterior mirrors and restyled wheels which now vary in size from 19 to 21 inch rims that we have here. The rear now gets more overtaken presence, appropriate since this is the perspective other motorists are most likely to get as you 
blast by. This new lower diffuser is a big visual improvement. Well, on this top GTS version anyway, it doesn't work quite as well with the less prominent exhaust fitted to the two litre models. As before, stylist Michael Mauer's original design remains embellished by this smart three-part LED light panel that connects the two tail light clusters and showcases Porsche lettering in three-dimensional script that's almost indecipherable when the LEDs are lit and the whole thing illuminates like a lightsaber as you lock the car at night. The Macan was certainly always very different at the wheel, not only from a Q5 but from every other SUV rival. Is it still? Absolutely. The whole soul of a sports car thing might be a difficult concept to swallow from the outside, but you feel it keenly here at the wheel, thanks to the way the low set seat and this high centre console create such a cockpit style feel in a cabin that, as before, features peerless build quality and great ergonomics. The changes made to this last of the line model won't be difficult to spot if you've owned a recent Macan. The rows of little buttons that used to flank the gear stick on the flight deck like centre console have now been replaced by sleek, shiny, haptic switch panels surrounding a redesigned shifter, a change which makes this interior feel a great deal more modern. These panels, like the Porsche Communications Management Center screen just above, stay dark until you power up. Something you do by inserting the brand's usual car-shaped key into an ignition socket, rather than merely by pressing a button. That betrays the age of this design, as does the fact that through the new 911 source three-spoke sports steering wheel, you don't view a completely digital instrument binnacle, though, like us, you might think that to be a rather good thing. This classic three-tube instrument layout is so distinctively Porsche, with the rev counter, as usual, with this brand assuming central pride of place. Time to see how this model stacks up in the rear. Three adults could certainly fit for short to medium journeys, provided the unfortunate middle seat occupant didn't mind splaying their legs around this extremely high centered transmission tunnel. OK, let's have a look out back where the standard automatic tailgate rises to reveal a 500 litre cargo bay. The rear backrest folds in a useful 40-20-40 split, which means you can poke through things like skis without disturbing rear seat passengers, and push the rear bench completely forward and a 1500 litre capacity is freed up. This is still the car all its rivals would like to be. And at the time of this test, it was still the car most buyers in this segment aspire to have. There are, it's true, more efficient or more spacious choices in this sector. Some premium mid-sized SUVs are better equipped or will take you further off-road. And almost all will cost slightly less. For all that, though, this is an addictive package, a segment-defining car and a very desirable thing indeed. The new electric version will have to be very, very good to better the benchmark laid down here. Perhaps nothing in this class ever will.